I guess there must be something important going on here because people have strong opinions about it, you know, and that's when you know that you're kind of striking a chord that that this subject needs to be, you know, brought to, to light. Welcome to the Female Entrepreneur Musician Podcast with Bree Noble. Bree is a musician, entrepreneur, speaker, and founder of Women of Substance Music Radio and Podcast. Bree's interviews with successful female musicians and industry pros are both inspirational and informational. She also answers your questions about the music business. Bree is on a mission to help you create great music, connect with your fans, and grow your business, and to truly become a female entrepreneur musician. Hey, this is Bree Noble, and you're listening to the Female Entrepreneur Musician Podcast, where we help you make great music, connect with your audience, and grow your business. Today, I talk with Laura B. Whitmore. She's a singer-songwriter. She also runs a music marketing company, and best of all, she started the Women's International Music Network, which puts on events and showcases across the country and also hosts the She Rocks Awards at NOM, which is really exciting. So you need to stay tuned and listen to that. She'll talk about that. She'll talk about how you can submit to be in one of their showcases. But first, I want to remind you that we are giving away a free month of the Female Musician Academy to the lucky person that I draw out of the reviews that we get this month on iTunes. And if you don't know how to give us a review on iTunes, you can go to iTunes on your computer and go to write a review. You can also go on your mobile device. And if you look for us in the store by going to the search icon and looking up female musician will come up right away and you can click on our cover art and then right next to the details tab is the ratings and reviews tab. Just click on that and then click write a review. And now to my interview with Laura B. Whitmore, here's some information about her. Music industry veteran Laura B. Whitmore owns and runs Mad Sun Marketing, a boutique agency that specializes in marketing, PR, artist relations, event production, graphic design, and more for music and audio companies. A singer songwriter herself, Whitmore is the founder of Women's International Music Network, WIMN.com Women, and creator of the GuitarWorld.com feature blog series, Guitar Girl. She's also editor of Guitar World's acoustic channel, Acoustic Nation. So that's a little bit about Laura Whitmore. So Laura, is there anything you can tell us that's not in your bio that might be a little bit more personal? Um, yes. Well, I live in Boston and I just moved here a year ago. And one thing that I'm really excited about is I'm going to be launching a series of house concerts in my house that I'm calling Acoustic Kitchen. So we're starting that next month, which is really exciting. And then I also have two teenage children that I have fun running around and helping and dealing with. And they're wonderful <laughs> kids, my son and daughter. And, um, I don't know. I think, you know, I'm, I'm a musician myself and I'm constantly trying out new guitars and new songs and always have a little bit of a riff in my head somewhere. <laughs> yeah. I want to find yeah. out about that. How did you get started in music and you know, what kind of a, you're a singer songwriter, I think, and what kind of yes. like style of music do you do? Yes, I am a singer songwriter. I, I think I'm you know, I'm highly influenced by my past, and that was uh, my favorite artists were Carole King and Carly Simon and Sean Colvin and those sorts of folks. So I kind of lean in that direction, although I've been known to sing rock and heavy metal and whatever else comes along. Um, <laughs> but I got started in music, you know, I don't even know. I've always, I always wanted to be a musician. I loved music. I remember in elementary school yeah, having a wonderful music teacher. And she's probably the one who got me inspired. Her name was Mrs. Price. I still remember her. Um, mm. And I love to sing. And I used to always write songs for like my Barbie dolls to sing on their little <laughs> stage I made for them. So I guess, you know, it was always, it was always in me somewhere. And then I went to college for music, um, you know, when I got through high school and uh, got a music business degree and always performed all through college and beyond and have worked in the music industry my entire career. So. Wow. So the performing and recording, like what percentage of your 
like full-time career is that versus all the business stuff? Yeah, very little, unfortunately. Uh. <laughs> That's sort of my, you know, I don't want to call it a hobby because I'm really passionate about it and I've done it my whole life, but I can't really say that's my like music making livelihood, you know. Um, but I am constantly writing music. I record. I do often record at home. I've I learned how to, you know, use Pro Tools and record myself. Um, but since I moved to Boston, I've had a little bit of a challenge getting that rolling again because I had to meet all mm. new people, you know, new studios right. and new musicians. And, and I'm getting there, but I will be um, singing as part of my house concert series. I'll be opening up for the different acts that perform. So I'm going to indulge myself there. <laughs> That's fun. So when yeah. does that house concert series start? It starts in July. July 16th okay. is the first date. So. Oh my gosh. I'm actually going to be arriving in Boston on the 14th. Oh, well, you should come. Be, I, maybe I will come if I can find a time kitchen. that I'm in Boston that <laughs> you're doing it because I'm mostly going to be in Maine, but I'll be uh, in and out of Boston a few times. So, Well, I will Love send you information there. and maybe you'll want to yeah. do that. So it'll be really fun. Yeah. Why not? So what prompted you to start the PR firm that you have, which is called Mad Sun Marketing, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. What yeah. And I love that. I always love that when musicians themselves start a marketing firm because they can really identify with the musicians that they work with. And I think that's a real plus. Mm -hmm. so what, what helped you decide to do that? And, you know, what do you think your strengths are as a company? Yeah. You know, so, um, Mad Sun Marketing sort of specializes not necessarily in, in musician PR. We work a lot with music companies so we have clients that are guitar companies and amps and keyboard companies and things like that. Um, but we do occasionally work with musicians as well. And I started the company, I was working at Korg USA, which is, you know, mm. Korg is that keyboard company. Um, and I was, I, wo I worked for them for 20 years doing marketing and PR and all kinds of other fun stuff, event planning uh, for the Korg Marshall and Vox brands of products. So I had a lot of experience uh, doing that. And I was also the editor of their own like user magazine that they had. And then my husband got this great job offer in California and I left Korg USA and I said, wow, I'm moving across the country. Maybe it's time to start my own agency, which I had kind of, you know, been daydreaming about in the back of my mind for a while. <laughs> and mm -hmm. it gave me that opportunity to do that. And so... Uh, when I moved to California, I started Mad Sun Marketing, and I was very fortunate that I had, you know, a few really big clients as I started, and sort of I even had people waiting for me to leave Korg so they could start working with me, which was kind of a, a very nice way to start a company. That's really yeah. cool, because I was going to yeah. say, how do you even start something like that? Yeah. You know, but you kind of had your foot in the door already. I did, because I had been doing that kind of work for 20 years, and you get to know people in the industry, you know. But I can't say that it was easy. I mean, it was very challenging to start my own company. And honestly, about a year and a half in, I was like, wow, I don't know if I can do this. Because, mm. it, you know, it's, it's, I think, very, people think that working from home is this great thing, and there are a lot of great elements to it, but you're alone a lot, you know, mm, and yeah. I'm a very social person. So it took me a while to figure out how to maneuver that whole scenario of being home alone from most of my work day, you know, and how to deal with that. Um, but now I'm very fortunate that I have two full-time employees working for me um, out of their own homes, but we're in constant contact all day long. And, um, and then I have, you know, part-time people as well and freelancers. And so it's sort of grown into this very social company that I think is kind of the new model for small business, although the government isn't very friendly to that sort of model <laughs> at all. <laughs> yeah, I have the, basically the same setup. I've got me and a couple assistants and, and you know, they work at different hours too, which is interesting. You know, one of them works when I'm working and one works more when I'm not working when the kids are home. But it's fine because then I feel like, oh, there's somebody working for me like 16 out, hours out of the yeah. day. That's kind yeah. of cool. <laughs> it is. I mean, I, I agree. You know, I have Pauline who's out on the West Coast and then I have Tom who's in Nashville and myself on the East Coast. So between the three of us, I mean, it's a, it's a broad range of hours that we can address 
things that come up with our clients and, and it, you know, that helps, I think with the small business, you know, yeah, that is good to be able to serve them that way. Yeah. And so I saw that you guys do like events. Is it to promote events to promote the different music companies? Yeah. You know, we actually do a lot of event production. We'll do, we'll do special events that are just for company promotion, but then we'll do other ones that are, you know, our own of our own making just because, um, you know, we believe in a cause like, I know we'll talk about this later, but the women's international music network, um, we promote events for for that organization that um, involve women and shine a spotlight on female performers and things like that. So we do a really wide variety of events now um, for all different companies. I, I actually produce some events for Guitar World Magazine as well. We have one coming up on June 21st. We're doing this huge um, guitar jam in Union Square Park in New York City. Oh, so, wow. Yeah, so there's all kinds of event things that we work on and I actually really enjoy events, but I, I have to tell you my sort of philosophy about events. I say events are 95%, you know, what the hell did I get myself into? And five, <laughs> and 5%, that was awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty much what it is. And then when it's over, it's like, oh, that was so awesome. Let's do it again. But yeah, like, right. you forgot what it's like having a baby, you, you know, forgot, you forgot, you that, forgot but, what you went through. Right, You forgot, especially if it's a ticketed event and you're like, oh my God, is anyone going to buy a ticket? And then, you know, once it sells out, you're, you're great. But at those days leading up to it and you're like, oh, what did I, why am I doing this? I must be crazy. You know, that's so true. <laughs> I think a lot of the artists listening can identify with that. Like when you do your album release show and you think what if yeah. nobody shows yeah, up you know uh, yeah I know <laughs> even those house concerts you know I I, I can't sell tickets because it's in my house that's not legal but I can ask for donations for the artists that are performing and right. you know you just hope that people are going to come and and a lot of people have been very positive about it so I'm feeling pretty confident but um you know, just anything. You're you're like, okay, I, I think this is the right thing to do. And and I think sometimes you do have to trust your gut and and your experience. But uh yeah, there's those moments. <laughs> mm -hmm. There's those moments now you're like I'm crazy. Have you had a have you had a mentor along the way that kind of helped guide you into this career that you're in now? You know, I I, ha I did have a really wonderful mentor when I worked at Korg USA. Uh, his name is Larry DeMarco. And he was my boss at Korg for, oh gosh, like a good 17 or 18 years. And, you know, he really encouraged me to learn um, new skills and um, to be very independent and sort of, you know, self-managing, which I think very helped me very much, you know, later as I built my own business. Um, but I also learned from him that you know, I learned to come to him whenever I had a problem, I would always come, I would always figure out a solution before I went to him with the problem. And I think that mm -hmm. was a really valuable lesson was, you know, don't just tell me there, there's a problem, like think about what would, okay, what are you going to do to solve this problem now? And, you know, empowering, you know, myself or yourself to, to think in those terms, I think it is a, a smart way to do business, you know? Um, Absolutely. Because someday you don't have a boss to ask. You just have right. to hope, hope that your solution is right. right. You know, and we have clients that we're trying to please all the time and there's things that come up. And so we try to come up with solutions, you know, at the same time that the problems arise and or issues. And, you know, I think that's a, you know, sort of owning up to that and then thinking about solutions or possible avenues of action is a, is a really important you know, skill to have and thing to do. So, um, I have to say that Larry DeMarco helped me, you know, move in that direction. So he was, and I still keep in touch with him and it's wonderful to, to talk to him. So that's great. Yeah. Well, in, in that vein, has there been a time where you came up with kind of a really bold idea and you went out on a limb kind of to do this thing and, you know, how did that go over and what did you learn by just jumping in with something like that? Yeah, you know, um, so a, a few years ago, I started a column for Guitar World for their online uh, site called Guitar Girled. 
And it was a column that focuses on female guitarists. And I really didn't think it was a big deal at the time. I was like, oh, you know, I started, I had started moving into this world of talking to a lot of female musicians. And so I started interviewing every week. I was interviewing a female guitarist or band or talking about an issue that had to do with women in music. And well, number one, I didn't realize how much that struck a chord, like how lacking a voice for those women, you know, was that they needed that voice. But I also didn't realize how, like, how opinionated people were about the idea of featuring, you know, focusing on on something that featured women. And a lot of people really loved it. But there were some people who had the opposite reaction and were like, you know, we don't want to be featured just as women. We want to be thought of as, you know, just great musicians or, you know, not just we, but, you know, you, you know, how can you work right for a company, you know, about what female musicians that has, you know, features, you know, girls in bikinis with guitars. And there was just a lot of aspects to it. Mm. And I was like, wow, you know, I guess there must be something important going on here because people have strong opinions about it, you know, and that's when you know that you're kind of striking a chord that, that this subject needs to be, you know, brought to to light. And honestly, I I sort of think about it in a very, you know, even-handed way. You know, yes, I agree. It would be wonderful if everybody was recognized for their own merits and it had nothing to do with, you know, what gender you are or, you know, but the world is not perfect. And so, you know, so are you telling me because Guitar World, um, features women in bikinis that I shouldn't give a voice to these women who are like legitimate, like kick-ass guitar players. Right. Like that doesn't make sense to me at all, you know? And yes, I understand Guitar World is a business. And sometimes those are the things that they do for their business, you know, decisions. They make decisions to do those things, but I'm not going to not do what I do because of that or not be affiliated with them. So, you know, I try to look at things from a variety of perspectives. That's how I deal with it. But I, you know, I do passionately believe that women, you know, need that voice and that we need champions to, to lead the way to help more women, you know, see that it's okay to, to be a female musician, that we're all in it together, that we support each other. And, you know, that's kind of my, my take on that. But yeah, obviously I agree with you on that one, (laughs) but I mean, it, it is amazing. Like the people that come out of the woodwork to find fault with something that you, you, you've thought to yourself, how could anyone ever find fault with this? Like, this is all a good thing. And, you know, but there's always going to be haters. I think if you're doing something important, and like you said, that means you struck a chord. Yeah, I think so too. And, you know, it's so funny too. Um, Guitar World readers, for some reason, not actually, they've gotten a little bit better lately, but for a while, they were very um, negative. So, you know, a lot of my posts on Guitar World are very, I, I state my personal opinion a lot, and I've actually shared a lot of my own music or, you know, my own thoughts, pictures of myself playing an instrument, whatever. And I'm always like, I'm always terrified of, like, uh. you know, the social media reactions and everything like that. But I've sort of sort of gotten a thicker skin from it now. But uh, there's definitely haters out there. But I, I don't, I don't really let that stop me pretty much ever. <laughs> that's good. No, that's a great attitude. So tell us, what is the most mind blowing experience that you've ever had? Like, have you ever just done an event that you just couldn't believe that that happened? Or have you ever gotten an award or been on stage with somebody that you couldn't believe that, you know, that was you doing that. Yeah. Yes. And it was very recent. Um, so the women's international music network, we just hosted the third annual she rocks awards in January of 2015. And to make a long story short, I was on stage co-hosting the event with Orianthi. We gave awards to Colby Calais, who performed her new song. Um, we had the Bengals there, who also performed. We had women from all over the music industry. And so this is an event that I launched three years ago. And to get to that level in three years and be there on stage through, in front of a packed house, you know, it was just an incredible couple of hours. And 
I, I was kind of blown away by this industry support and everyone's reaction. And, you know, we sold out the show and it was, it was really incredible. So yeah, wow, so that, that is awesome. I'm a bit jealous yeah. when I read that in the bio, I was like, oh, you know, if only I were still in LA, I would have gone to that. Yeah, you know, but, yeah. I mean, I love, love, love Colby Calais, but, um, and I used to just love the bangles too. But um, how, so how did you get access? Like only having three years that you've been doing this award, like, did people take you seriously? Like, did you have to go through some huge, you know, wall of, of PR people to be able to, you know, I know you're giving these people an award, mm -hmm. but still it's like, they might not take you seriously. Like, oh, well, she doesn't have time for you. Or, you know, how, yeah. do, you, how do you do that? You know, it is really difficult. It's something, you know, we started the awards three years ago and the first year, was um that was very challenging to find that first award winner who would believe in you you know and say <laughs> yes so actually the first person who we gave an award to that said yes was holly knight um who is an oh. incredible like producer and songwriter a very like she's been inducted into the songwriting hall of fame um she wrote a lot of hits for tina turner and pat benatar and and, um, you know, it's a lot of asking. I mean, I was very fortunate that I have a lot of contacts in the music industry and, um, you know, some credibility with my career with Guitar World and, you know, other things that I do. But it's it's a lot of knocking on doors and, you know, networking and talking to people who might know people. And, you know, the Colby Calais thing, that came about because um, I had a connection who knew her dad. And, you know, Ken Kelly, I knew that he was going to be at NAMM and I'd heard that he was bringing Colby to the NAMM mm. show with him. And I sort of got connected that way and talked to him first and told him about the awards and said, you know, this is what I do. And he just loved it. He was great. So he mm. he's the one who opened that door for me. But, that's, but that's you never know. Cool. I mean, it's it's uh, it's convoluted, you know, and the Bengals actually know their uh this person who runs their label, who I met through like some other things. So you never, mm. you know, it's, it's a lot of networking. I'm, I'm definitely a firm believer in networking and relationships and karma. You know, uh, I, I go out of my way a lot of times to do things for people because I, I have this feeling like, you know, if I open doors for them, maybe one day there'll be a door they can open for me. Yes, so absolutely. You know. And I, I try to make this so clear to musicians all the time because you never know, you know, yeah. down the road, who's going to open a door for you. I mean, you, this could be some like little tiny band right now that you allowed to open for you. Yeah. And then someday they could be way bigger than you and do you a favor, you know, That's or know right. somebody that can do you a favor. So yeah, always, you know, and don't, you know, don't think about it like, oh, I'm going to get mine yeah. later. You know, just think about doing a good deed. I agree. Right? And I actually, yeah find that, you know, there's certain women I've met over the years that I just really think are incredibly talented. And I will, I go out of my way to help them and give them opportunities just because it makes me feel really good. You know, it yeah. doesn't really have anything to do with, Hey, if they're famous one day, they'll help me, you know, I, I mean, <laughs> really, that's a long shot, no matter what, anyway, you know, right. it's like, you know, I like them. I think they're super talented. I enjoy helping them, you know, so uh, Plus, I think, I don't know, for me, like once I hit 40, I was just like over the whole like I need to be famous yeah. kind of thing. And like, I don't even care if I ever meet anybody famous. I'm I'm good, you know? Yeah. And I think that's maybe when you have the opportunities when you're over to just being wanting it so badly. Isn't that funny? I, th I feel yeah. that way about performing, too. Like, you know, when I was mm -hmm. younger, I used to so desperately like want to make it big. You know, it was my dream to be a performer. And now I still love performing, but it doesn't have that same sense of like, oh my God, if I don't make it big, I'm going to die. You know, I, <laughs> I enjoy it so much more because it's just for the love of it for me now. Uh, absolutely. You know? That's exactly yeah. what happened. That's exactly how my career actually happened because I tried and tried and tried and met people on the recycler and tried to be in bands and all that stuff you know, because I wanted it a certain way. Right. And I just needed to know that it wasn't going to happen that way. And I was going to be happy with the way I did it. And that was where I had the most success. So I totally think that that is a great point. You know, I think it's interesting too, because um, here's another like crazy moment, but this year I was asked to be the commencement speaker at McNally Smith College of Music's commencement. 
And so wow. they flew me to St. Paul, Minnesota, and I gave the commencement speech this year. And that really blew my mind. You know, that there was something like never crossed, you know, my brain activity. Like, yeah, I want to speak at a commencement. So I was contacted by a, a former colleague who now is working for the college. And he came to a panel that I was on at the NAM show in January and and sort of waited till the panel was over and approached me and said, hey, you know, I'm now working for this college and we'd really love you to um, be involved in what we're doing at the college. And I started speaking to them about, you know, being on their advisory board and things like that. And then the president of the college called me and offered, uh, he asked me if I wanted to speak at the commencement and I was kind of blown away, you know. Oh. Um, but uh, it was just an incredible, incredible experience. And, and I, the, as I was writing the speech, I was getting, I'm like, so emotional, you know, I'm thinking, wow, I, I hope I'm giving these, these kids the right advice. And I talk a lot about, you know, showing up and networking and being kind to people and all these things that you don't learn in college. <laughs> oh, that's true. <laughs> You know? Yeah, you can't you can't go to the career center and get that advice, you know. Yeah, you don't. And and I went through the whole list of things, and at the end, I was like, and as you, if you think about it, you didn't learn, you know, none of these things are things you learn in college. But if you, if you couple those with what you learned here, then you're you're in a good place. So that's, that's you know, a great, incredible that's a great speech. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Well, I wanted to ask you, how did you decide to start the Women's International Music Network? Right. So the Women's International Music Network, or thewomen.com, T-H-E-W-I-M-N. Oh, my gosh. I didn't even think of that. <laughs> like, I saw that, and I'm like, women. Yeah. You know? oh, women, of course. <laughs> thewomen.com. Yes. Yeah, so that started, um, we had been, I had been writing that column for Guitar World, uh, guitar girl, and I had been approached to do an event um, in New York at this resort, called, and I named it the Women's Music Summit. It was an event focusing on women and aimed at getting female musicians together to learn and network and uh, hang out for a few days together. And so, as I'm developing this Women's Music Summit, I'm thinking, "Wow, like there's a lot of stuff going on that this really resonates with." with female musicians. And as I started thinking about doing this award show at the NAM show that following January, I was like, wow, I need a home for, for this, you know, all these things I'm thinking about. And so honestly, I developed the women.com as a, a home for the She Rocks Awards, but also it became so much more. You know, as I started thinking about the project, I was like, wow, well, this should have, you know, information for women. It should shine a spotlight on, you know, a woman every week. It should have, we should do some other events. You know, it's sort of one of those things that as it gets going and you start to realize like, wow, this is filling this really great need that it, it takes on its own life. And I think that's how you know a project is like, needed and valued when that happens. Um, so yeah, so that was in, uh, gosh, I think it was 2012. Um, and when we first launched the organization and, and then we had the first She Rocks Awards that January and, and it's kind of grown from there. So. Wow. Now, is it just a labor of love? Is it a nonprofit? Is it an actual company? <laughs> It has been a labor of love um, for the last few years, but we are working on filing for nonprofit status now. Mm. And our events, like when we do the She Rocks Awards, that benefits um, the Girls Rock Camp Alliance. So okay. we have a nonprofit element to what we do. And we're always, you know, we, we sort of work as a nonprofit, but we haven't, you know, actually formally finished going through that yet. But that's our, that will happen this year in 2015. So. That's great. I love that. And do you, so do you have events like around the country and are they like networking events that musicians can get together? And Yeah. So we've done a few events and we have some more coming up this year. Um, we just did one in LA at the ASCAP Expo. We hosted okay. a showcase. Um, so we invite female musicians to submit um, like a song or a video clip uh, to get a slot in our showcase. And, you know, it's the nice thing is the events that we take part in are not like huge festivals for musicians. They're usually 
um, some event that has limited performance opportunities. So we give a very special opportunity to, to women uh, to perform at these events. And then we also do, uh, we do some networking events that are connected to them. So, um, you know, the one in LA, we had a sort of a pre um, showcase networking event. Um, we have one coming up in Nashville as part of this summer NAM show, uh, July 9th, and that's going to be at the listening room. And we just selected our performers for that. So that's really exciting, but people can come and meet each other and, um, check out the, the wonderful talent there. And we have giveaways and like Taylor guitars is a sponsor. And, and so is, 108 Rockstar Guitars, and we have like some instruments and things to give away to people that come, and it's pretty wonderful. And then we've got another one coming up in September as part of the WGBH Food and Wine Festival, which is here in Boston. Um, So that's been a really fun one to work on, too, and we still have submissions open for that one on our website, thewomen.com. So if you want to play. Now, how how do you choose? Like, do you have And do you charge for submissions and do you have like a review board or do you listen to them all yourself? Yeah, we don't charge for submissions. So it's free to submit. Um, Yes, I listen to every single one of them myself. But then what I do is I select like my favorite, you know, top 10 or top 12 or however many sort of strike me as like amazing. And then I share them with my team and we all kind of vote and listen and think about like the whole program, you know, so I don't want five performers that are all very similar. I want to kind of mix it up and kind of build it around that variety, but also the quality of performers. So, but I'm very hands-on with it right now. So. Wow. How do you make sure you don't get like a thousand submissions? I mean, that would be just crazy. If I got a thousand submissions, I'd be ecstatic, but I would get some help. (laughs) Yeah, I think so. So you're not advertising. You're just kind of going off word of mouth. No, we, we do. We don't advertise. I mean, we don't pay for advertising, but we promote it through um, social media and our partners and our, um, you know, PR. We send out news releases. We have other organizations like there's other women's organizations in the music industry that share our, our news and our announcements and and going on podcasts like this one, yes. who have basically <laughs> all female listeners. <laughs> yeah, no, it's great. And, and you know, we have gotten hundreds of submissions. And, you know, I find I, I try to, you know, our submission period is, you know, a few weeks long. So as things come in, I listen and I have a little rating system that I do that can kind of just keep up with them. And that way I can go back later and pull out the ones that were really sort of stood out for me. Um, so I have a method. You know, (laughs) well, that sounds like an amazing opportunity for all the female musicians listening to this show. So you definitely need to go check out the W I M N dot com. Yes. And especially the Boston one, because WGBH is going to promote the performers, which I think is really incredible. And if you don't know who they are, they're like the big um, public radio and television station in Boston. They have a huge viewer and listener base. So it's big time. That's, that's very, very cool. Yeah. So do you have a book recommendation that you could recommend either for like music business or music, maybe creating music, songwriting, or even like self-help or, you know, empowerment kind of book? Yes. I, I, I have a very strong opinion on that. <laughs> okay. I'm so, ready. Are you ready? My favorite, yeah. my favorite sort of self-help book that really changed pretty much my whole philosophy and life is called The Power of Nice. And oh. um, it's about business and it's about how being nice in business can really open doors for you. And it's it's a very short book, but it's it's probably the best thing I ever read. Um, wow. I got to check that book. out. I actually have never heard of that. Yeah, it's the power that's, of nice. That's exciting. I forget who the writers are, but they've they've written other famous business books that you've probably heard of um, more readily than that one. But that okay. one. Okay. Well, I will that. find it and I'll put it in the show notes. So anybody that would like to find that book, just go to femusician.com and look for this episode and you will find, because I don't know the number yet because it's going to be airing in several weeks, but um, look for Laura's episode and you will see the 
book recommendation. It sounds really awesome. I'm going to check it out. Yeah. So we, we have almost reached the end of our time. I just want to get all the information on how people can get in touch with you. Mm -hmm. Um, I know we talked about the W I M N.com. Where else can people find you online? Yeah. Well, you know, we have a website for mad sun marketing. Uh, it's the mad hyphen sun.com and that's sun like the sun in the sky. Um, we, I also am on Facebook like crazy. So Laura B. Whitmore, I'm up there. There's a band page for me and there's also my personal page. And of course, Mad Sun and the women, the Women's International Music Network. We're all on all the social media, um, sites you can imagine <laughs> as the women. Um, and you know, I, actually, and if you want to listen to some music, you can go to my own personal music website, which is laurabwhitmore.com. So uh, I'm everywhere. I'm, I, I don't sleep much, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like it. And if you get a thousand submissions, you really won't sleep. Oh, that would be my dream. If I get a thousand submissions, like I'm going to send you a thank you note. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys, there you go. Go for it. Go challenge. Do it. Come to Boston. Boston in September is beautiful. <laughs> it actually is gorgeous. You need to go to Boston in September. That's right. There. Yeah. Just one other mention, we'll have the next She Rocks Awards in January of 2016 at Nanaheim, California. Oh, it's open yeah. to the public. Um, we do sell tickets for that one. So check thewomen.com for when tickets go on sale. Now, is it actually in the convention center or is it off-site? No, it is at the Hilton Hotel, which is connected to the convention center. You do not need a NAM badge to attend. Yay. Okay. And you can just get it, buy a ticket and come. And it's wonderful. So. I find I've been to Nam a couple of times and I find it extremely overwhelming. <laughs> yeah, but Just because there's so much stuff, you know, and then you want to buy everything, of course. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> uh, <laughs> That's what they're hoping for. <laughs> right. Well, thank you so much for taking out this time. And um, it has been great to talk to you. And I'm so glad we finally connected. I'm glad to find out all the amazing things that you're doing for female artists. And I know that we will be running into each other online or in person in the future, because since we're both really, you know, excited about promoting female artists, I'm sure that we will be working together in some way in the future. So thank you so much for yes. spending this time and letting everybody know what you're doing. Thank you so much. That sounds wonderful. It's really wonderful to speak with you. Now go out and make great music, connect with your fans and grow your business. Female Entrepreneur Musician has been brought to you by femusician.com and femalemusicianacademy.com with editing by Jen Eads of 317 Sound Design and music by Stella Ronson. <laughs>